The sun is shining and you guys want to know, sunscreen plus polypodium, is this the ultimate summer pairing for healthy skin? Let's get into it. A lot of people are interested in polypodium supplements because they've heard on their favorite podcast that these supplements can be a game changer for sun damage, skin cancer prevention, sunburn, and they've heard that it's all natural. It comes from a plant, so it must be good for us. And a lot of you guys even are curious about putting polypodium directly on your skin. Can that offer any benefits in terms of hyperpigmentation, age spots, visible signs of skin aging, melasma, etc.? What the heck is polypodium anyway? Polypodium is a tropical fern, and extracts from the leaf, specifically of this fern, are rich in a variety of active compounds that essentially act as antioxidants and have anti inflammatory benefits that suggest they may end up helping our skin handle the damaging effects of sun exposure. Why is sun? so damaging to our skin. It seems counterintuitive. Didn't we evolve to be out in the sun all day? Ultraviolet radiation from the sun damages our skin in a variety of ways and without a doubt is well established because of these adverse effects to set the stage for skin cancers, photo aging of the skin, as well as exacerbation of numerous skin conditions. These outcomes are largely the result of ultraviolet radiation leading to the generation of reactive oxygen species in the skin, directly damaging the DNA in our skin cells, causing a bunch of inflammation while simultaneously suppressing our immune system's ability to come in and repair said damage. Then down deep in the skin, it leads to remodeling of the deeper layers of the skin and impaired function of those fibroblasts that are there to produce collagen. Over time, chronic sun exposure or the ultraviolet radiation through its damage to cells essentially leads to skin cell deterioration with impairment in their lipid membrane function functions due to lipid peroxidation from all of those reactive oxygen species. When we talk about the damaging effects of the sun on our skin, a lot of the conversation is focused on ultraviolet radiation, UVA and UVB specifically, well established to lead to all of these problems, skin cancers, photo aging, and exacerbation of numerous skin conditions. But, but that big fireball up there also is a huge source of infrared radiation, as well as visible light. So light wave lengths of visible light, namely in the blue light spectrum, actually are now thought to play a key role in hyperpigmentation in deeper skin tones. And infrared radiation from the sun is also thought to play a role in skin aging as well. So it's not just the ultraviolet radiation. These other players also likely feed into a lot of the adverse effects that chronic sun exposure has on our skin. Extracts from the polypodium leaf are thought to help offset some of this damage largely by reducing reactive oxygen species and subsequent lipid peroxidation of cell membranes, helping to keep membrane integrity. They've also been shown to inhibit some of the DNA damage that occurs as well as the abnormal influx of blood vessel growth, the immunosuppression, and on skin biopsy are shown to reduce some of the signs of sun damage, such as what are referred to as sunburn cells. Yeah, you guessed it. When you are exposed to ultraviolet radiation, the skin cells are like, oh my gosh, I cannot stand this. I'm just going to off myself through a program process known as apoptosis. And under the microscope, you see these little pink blobs of dead cells. Those are known as sunburn cells. It's speculated that this extract also might help reduce one's risk for skin cancers, although we don't have long-term data to substantiate that suspected outcome. There's also evidence on biopsy that there is a reduction in what is known as solar elastosis. That's a histologic finding, a biopsy finding of sun damage. Extracts from this tropical fern leaf are also thought to help protect the fibroblasts in the deeper layers of the skin. That's all well and good to have preclinical mechanistic studies suggesting this, that, and the other, but when rubber hits the road, what does the actual clinical data on real humans, not cells in a dish, not small animal models, but actual living, breathing people? Clinical studies studies suggest it may be beneficial in people who have skin types that burn either super easily or fairly easily pale to medium skin tones, in other words. There is evidence in human volunteers of a reduction in DNA damage, suggesting it may help reduce the risk of skin cancers and photo aging, although we don't have long-term studies to substantiate the suspected outcome. Who here has heard of an actinic keratosis? If you haven't, you need to watch my video all about 
lactinic keratoses. I think I even mentioned polypodium in that video because people who make these pre-skin cancers, they have to go in for treatment on the regular. They are related to cumulative sun exposure, tend to happen in people with paler skin types who have gotten a lot of sun throughout their lifetime. And if left untreated, some of them will go on to become full-blown squamous cell carcinoma. So they are treated. There is a small study that showed a reduction in recurrences of actinic keratoses following the actinic keratosis treatment known as photodynamic therapy. Can't say anything about whether or not it prevents them from happening, but if you're someone who makes a lot of them and are going through treatment, it may help reduce recurrences. Now, a lot of you guys want to know about hyperpigmentation. Specifically, let's talk about melasma because there is some clinical data to suggest that polypodium supplementation plus SPF 45 gets you a better reduction in the overall melasma severity in comparison to good old fashioned SPF 45 alone. Some of you guys have that nuisance photosensitive skin condition, polymorphous light eruption. It can make your spring time, summer months miserable. You get a rash related to sun exposure and you got to be real aggressive with, you know, sunscreen and sun protected behaviors above and beyond what everybody else seems to need to do in order to keep from getting these miserable rashes. Well, there is some suggestion that polypodium supplementation coupled with sun protective behaviors can help reduce the appearance of the polymorphous light eruption, the rash. Can't use it just by itself and expect to get these results. You do still need to do the other sun protective behaviors, but it seems to kind of perhaps be the missing piece of the total protective package for specifically patients with this photosensitive condition. Now, there are many, many, many photosensitive diseases. That's one of the most common, but there's also solar urticaria, aka hives triggered by sun exposure. We really don't have data on solar urticaria to say for sure if polypodium would help there, but one might hope that it would. Also, those of you out there with lupus, you guys with lupus, you know that it can affect your skin in a variety of ways, and one such way is something known as subacute cutaneous lupus erythematosus. If you're curious what that looks like, definitely watch my video all about cutaneous lupus because I break down the different rashes there. But there is some clinical suggestion that polypodium supplementation may be helpful for those individuals and, and mechanistically it makes perfect sense when paired, of course, with good sun protection. What about post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation? Truthfully, we don't really have any good clinical data on polypodium supplementation for that. But given what we know about it showing promise for melasma in how it works, one might remain hopeful that it could help in individuals who are inclined towards post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So for example, you get a bug bite, a try as you may, it seems to always heal with a dark mark. A lot of that is related to not just ultraviolet radiation, but the visible light piece of things as well. So yeah, it might actually help. Here's one condition that may come as a surprise, and that is actually vitiligo. Vitiligo, as a side note, I have a whole video on. It's an autoimmune attack against the pigment producing cells, the melanocytes, to over time, you lose pigmentation in areas that are affected, okay? Um, and it turns bone white. Because it's an autoimmune attack, the immune system is coming in and attacking you. Well, we can harness the immunosuppressive effects of ultraviolet radiation in a strategic way known as phototherapy to get that to calm down so the skin can't repigment. There are a variety of ways to deliver phototherapy for vitiligo. This is very different from just going out and getting natural sun exposure and that the dose, the timing is very controlled. But there is some clinical research to suggest that patients with vitiligo undergoing different types of phototherapy to get repigmentation, they get better repigmentation if they're taking polypodium. So if you have vitiligo and you are about to embark on phototherapy, talk to your doctor about, would this be right for me? But what about applying it to the skin? Very little data there. Now we know that applying antioxidants to the skin does show promise for reducing the burden of damage to the skin when paired with sun protective behaviors. Given how antioxidant rich polypodium leaf extracts are, it is thought that yeah, applying them to the skin might help. And there is uh, some studies looking at not actual human volunteers, but reconstituted epidermis in the lab and showing a reduction in basically sun damage when exposed to UV in the laboratory. Outside of these specific scenarios, hmm, kind of hard to say whether everyone else out there would really benefit. These studies are promising 
interesting and a lot of dermatologists in these specific scenarios for these specific conditions do advocate for their patients to take polypodium leaf extract supplements. They seem to make a difference. However, these are very specific conditions, very specific concerns, very specific outcomes. Does everyone else out there benefit from polypodium leaf extract supplements? Hard to say because they've been studied in specific skin conditions. And so if you don't have those, it's hard to say, especially, especially for just the everyday person who is mostly indoors or who lives somewhere where the UV is not that intense. Is this really going to add that much to the picture? Speaking of things to consider, how safe is this? Like it's all well and good, but because people assume, oh, it's coming from a fern, it must be all natural, safe and effective. But we all know that just because it's growing out in nature, by no means is it gonna be safe and risk-free. There was a review paper looking at 40 years of preclinical and clinical data on polypodium leaf extract supplementation. Oral doses ranging between 120 milligrams to 1,080 milligrams. About 2% of people reported different gastrointestinal upset like bloating or they reported itch. And in one study, some people reported headache as well. Keep in mind, the studies that we have looking at these specific outcomes that we just went over, they are pretty small. So in other words, more research is needed, but based on the available data that we have, it does suggest that the supplementation when taken as directed appears to be safe. That being said, it has not been investigated during pregnancy, breastfeeding, or in children under the age of 18. So for those groups, stay tuned. We don't know if it's safe in that regard. How much do you need to take? It's hard to say because this is a supplement, so we don't have good dose response data. But when we take all of the available data that we do have and look at some pharmacokinetic data, it does suggest that an effective dose would be on the order of seven and a half milligrams per kilogram of body weight per day. It does appear to be bioavailable in the realm of 71 to 100%, meaning it actually gets absorbed and goes where it needs to go. It's metabolized in the liver. So if you're someone who has liver disease, uh, talk to your doctor, I would proceed with caution. The half-life of this leaf extract is about four to six hours. Polypodium leaf extract supplements usually come in 240 milligram capsules. Now, like I said, the effective dosing is on the order of seven and a half milligrams per kilogram of body weight. So uh, most of these supplements will tell you to take one a day, but in different studies, there are different dosing parameters, taking them twice a day. So if your doctor has advised you to take these, clarify with them the dosing that they think is best for you. Because in some cases, it seems prudent to be taking it in the morning as well as in the afternoon. What is a good polypodium supplement, you may be wondering? Well, I'm not sponsored by any polypodium supplement company. I will tell you that supplements, they're not regulated like medications. So there is tremendous heterogeneity out there in terms of quality and effective formulations. Not all formulations are created equal. All of the data that we just touched on, all of the papers that we have were done using a brand of polypodium leaf extract supplements known as HelioCare. Now, again, I'm not sponsored by HelioCare. I'm not here to plug HelioCare, but that supplement is what has been investigated the most. That's the supplement that was used in all of these studies. And the HelioCare makers grow that grow the leaf under very controlled conditions and produce an aqueous extract from the leaf. And it's well established to contain these different anti-inflammatory compounds. And that's what subsequently has been shown in both preclinical studies and then in clinical studies to exert these different biologic effects that we are seeking to get to the point where it does help actually offset some of the damaging effects of ultraviolet radiation and perhaps infrared and visible light as well when we are out in the sun. There's no evidence, however, to support that other formulations from competitors are as effective. And if you think about it, when we're talking about a plant extract, there can be a tremendous heterogeneity in terms of where the plant is grown, the time of the year that the extract is harvested, how it's harvested, there can be so much variability from manufacturer to manufacturer. The HelioCare supplement manufacturers are the ones who have been in all of the studies. So 
that is actually the most evidence-based supplement. Heliocare and the data that we have, what we know about polypodium is that it's a leaf extract. Some brands out there don't even use the leaf itself. Shout out to Lab Muffin because I was watching one of her videos a couple of months ago and she pointed out that there is this sun supplement that is being heavily promoted on different podcasts talking about how it contains polypodium, but it doesn't actually have polypodium leaf extract. It has extracts from the stems and the roots, which are completely different, completely different composition. The other take home point that is very important, polypodium supplementation should always be used with sun protection. It's not a way to protect your skin from ultraviolet radiation. It is meant to be a supplement to sun protection. So you cannot take this in place of wearing sunscreen. Just because you don't like sunscreen or you don't wanna put it on, you don't like the way it feels, it irritates your skin, you don't wanna cover up with sun protective clothing, you're not interested in seeking shade, you wanna be out midday when sun's UV rays are most intense and you wanna be out there all day, or maybe you need to be out there, okay, for your job or something like that. You cannot rely on a supplement alone to protect your skin. It's not actually intended to protect you from ultraviolet radiation. It's intended to kind of zoom in there and help, you know, calm down some of the effects. So when paired with sun protection, because sun protection is not a shield of armor itself, you still have UV coming in. But for people who are exquisitely sensitive, have underlying medical conditions that make them very sensitive or issues are really, really pale and very, very sensitive to the sun and getting a sunburn, that supplement to their total sun protection might just make a huge difference for them. Now, a lot of you guys may be wondering, okay, that's polypodium, but what about nicotinamide or niacinamide or NAD? You need to watch the video on the end slate because we talk about it there. We talk about it there as a supplement for, again, helping your skin perhaps with some of the damaging consequences of sun exposure. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.